Dear students, now we'll look at the different algorithms that are there to predict the RNA secondary structures. We need to compare them so as to find out their strengths and be able to combine them in a more meaningful way. As you know, the RNA sequences are called the primary or the one prime structures. The secondary or the two prime structures contain hairpin loops, bulges, etc. And the three prime or the tertiary structures, they are formed as a result of the two prime structures coming together. There are several two prime or the secondary structure prediction algorithms, but mainly they have two strategies at their core. The first one is the energy-based method. So the energy-based methods, they try to minimize the energy of the resultant structure that is formed after the one prime or the RNA sequence, it folds onto itself. The second type of algorithms, they rely upon maximizing the coupling of the nucleotides. So we have looked at Zucker's algorithm. So Zucker's algorithm is a very important algorithm that is there and it looks at the minimization of energy in the secondary structure. So its updated version uh, in its current form that is also available online as the uh, Zucker's M fold also includes the phylogenetic information. So in this way the algorithm is expanding and taking in more information however at its core lies the principle of minimizing the energy of the resultant two prime structure. To improve this, one can obviously uh, consider looking uh, at the different patterns that exist in the one prime structure. So once you have a lot of patterns that are repeating, then you can consider them in the energy minimization process. Essentially that would mean that RNA sequence that is that has a lower uh, folding energy but a lower presence in the structural databases the RNA structural databases would not be favored hence the prediction can be improved moreover the Zucker's algorithm relies on the fact that there should be no pseudonauts but that's a big assumption so you have to somehow consider how to modify Zucker's algorithm by considering the pseudonauts as well. More so, not just the nucleotides, even the secondary structures such as the hairpin loops, bulges, stems and so on and so forth, they are repeated in the RNA structures. They are repeated in nature. So if we can factor that in, during the prediction of the two prime algorithm, then it will be also very useful. Now let's take a look at the nucleotide stacking algorithms. The approach that we have looked at is the nusinov jacobson algorithm or simply the NJ algorithm. So it's a dynamic programming approach and it tries to maximize the coupling of the nucleotides. Of course, you have the traceback strategy that is used to extract the structure from the entire matrix. The improvement for this algorithm can come from the first and the most important scoring scheme. The scoring scheme in its current form considers four different positions in the matrix and takes the maximum from them. However, there are these situations in which you may want to look at other positions. More so, the fourth option, the fourth scoring possibility gives you a combination of two secondary structures that are coming together in the prediction. However, what about multi-loops which has three or maybe more RNA structures coming together? So this can also be a major improvement in this algorithm. More so, an optimal strategy would be that if you can combine the energy-based algorithms as well as the nucleotide coupling algorithms, that will be taking the best from both worlds. These algorithms are known 
to be 75% accurate in predicting the RNA secondary structure. So there is no perfect algorithm. However, this performance is still very useful. For further improvements, the sequence comparisons and the nucleotide covariance analysis, such as the ones that I just discussed, as well as the secondary structures that exist in nature and are more frequent, can be extremely useful.